In this video, I will teach you how to make this exact simulation in Blender. As always, it's going to be uh, quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by deleting the uh, light, so press X to delete, and then select the cube, and we're going to add some array modifiers to duplicate the uh, cube. So let's add 10 on the X axis, so let's set it to 1.01, .01. and then Press Shift D to duplicate the modifier. And then we're going to uh, duplicate the cubes on the Y axis with the relative offset at 1.01. .01. And then we need to apply the modifiers. And then press Tab for edit mode and then P to separate by uh, loose parts. And then we're going to set the origin to geometry so that they each have their own origins. Okay, and then we're going to add the physics. I'm going to set the mass to 10 kilos, and then the collision shape to box, because this is a cube. I'm also going to set the friction to one, so that we get some friction, and the margin, I'm just going to set the zero. I'm not even going to enable it for now. And then for the dynamics, I'm going to set the damping translation to 0.35, and then the uh, damping rotation 2.6 to uh, decrease the movement of the cubes once they have fallen. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, copy the physics to the rest of the cubes by uh, copying from active. And then let's create a save before we continue in case something crashes. And then press B to box select, number one for front view. And then press Shift D, set then 2.005 to uh, duplicate it on the Z axis. And then press Shift R to repeat the previous actions. The reason why we didn't use the array modifier on the Z axis is to decrease the likelihood of a crash when we copy the uh, various settings. And then next, we're going to add the floor. So press Shift A and add a plane. And then press S to scale. And then press G, set, then minus 1.01 .01 to move it a bit down on the Z axis. So something like this. And then next, we're going to add some uh, passive rigid body physics to the uh, plane. So uh, rigid body, and then set the type to passive, and then the shape to uh, mesh. And uh, we can also increase the uh, friction. And I'm going to set the margin to zero. And then we need to add a uh, sphere that we can uh, crash into the uh, tower. Press Shift A and add a UV sphere. And then press G to grab and then S to scale. And let's add a uh, subdivision surface modifier to increase the number of polygons, apply the modifier and then we can add some smooth shading as well. Okay. And then I'm going to press numpad one for front view and then G to grab. And then we're going to animate it. So uh, press uh, control shift S to create another save. Then I'm going to start from uh, frame 50 and then press N and then press I to keyframe the location. And then we can go to frame 100, press G to uh, grab the uh, sphere, and then press I to uh, keyframe the new location. And then we can enable the rigid body physics for the sphere. Let's set the mass to uh, three metric tons, and then set the uh, collision shape to sphere. And then we need to enable animated keyframe it by pressing I, and go to the next frame and disable it so that the sphere will keep moving. I'll set the friction to 1 and then I'll use the uh, same values for the uh, damping translation and rotation as we did for the cubes. And then I'm going to press T in the timeline and set the keyframe interpolation to cubic so that the uh, sphere accelerates. As you can see, and then after the keyframes, the rigid body physics will take over 
for the movement of the sphere. Okay, and then I'm going to save one more time. And then let's go into the scene properties and then rigid body world settings. And then we can go to cache and bake the uh, simulation. And once it's calculated, I spit up this part, we can see what the uh, simulation looks like. If you want to change the acceleration of the uh, sphere, you can just go down to the timeline, press T, and set the uh, keyframe interpolation to exponential, for example, and delete the uh, previous bake. I'm also going to uh, set the uh, end frame to 500 for the simulation, and then bake. And as you can see, when the uh, keyframe interpolation is exponential, the uh, sphere does a lot more damage to the uh, cube tower. Okay, so for the final simulation, I'm going to press T and then uh, change to uh, cubic instead. And then I'm going to bake once again. And I think I will stick to uh, this one because there are no cubes falling outside of the uh, plane. And uh, I'm going to save one more time. And then we can go to the rigid body rural settings. And to increase the accuracy of the simulation, I'm going to increase the number of substeps. And of course, at the end frame to 500. And then do the uh, bake once again. This one is going to uh, take a lot longer because the uh, quality is higher. But uh, that will also ensure that it's uh, more accurate. Okay, so now that we have the uh, physics set up, we can uh, set up the lighting and the materials. So uh, let's uh, start off by adding some uh, lighting. So press Shift A and then add a uh, sun. Then press G to grab the sun and R to rotate the sun. And I'll set the strength to 5 for now. And then for the render engine, I'm going to use cycles and the GPU. If you only have a uh, CPU, you can of course just use that one. And then for the sampling, which is the quality of the render, I'm going to set it to 300. And then uh, for the tiles, I'm going to set the tile size to 512. If you only have a CPU, you can just leave it at 64. And the tile size is just how large of an area you render at a time. Okay, so I think I'm going to go in to the light settings and uh, decrease the strength of the sun. I think that looks better. And then I'm also going to make the background completely white. which I think looks better than a black background, especially with the white floor. And then let's go to the first frame and then enable the overlay and press number 7 for top view. And then let's go into wireframe mode and then press B to box select, then hold in shift and select one of the cubes. And then we can go into the material of uh, that cube. And I'm going to set the uh, shader to the diffuse shader. And then for the color, I'm going to make it blue. But you can of course add whatever color you want. And then I'm going to link this material to the rest of the cubes. So press Ctrl L and then link the materials. As you can see, when we go into rendered view, they're all blue. Okay, so next we can add a material for the sphere. And for this one, I'm going to add a uh, glossy material. And you can change the roughness and the color as you wish. So just add something that you think looks nice. For uh, this tutorial, I ended up with a uh, red sphere. 
okay and then next we can save and then i'm going to set up the camera so let's go back to solid view and then press control alt number zero for camera to view and then select the camera and let's increase the end value to increase the range of the camera and then you can lock the camera to view and I'm just going to move on the timeline and make sure that everything is within the frame of the uh, camera at least uh, most of the cubes now as you can tell by the video timer we're approaching the end of the tutorial so we're soon going to start the render of the simulation but before that you can do the final adjustments to the uh, scene so you can change the colors the position of the camera and i'm also going to make the background completely white by setting the strength to two and you can also adjust the uh, colors okay so uh, next i'm going to go to the output settings set the resolution to 4k you can just leave it at 100 percent if you want it at 1080p and then i'm going to select an output folder for the render so i'm going to uh, select this folder and then create a new folder for all of the png images and then you can turn those png images into a video later there is a tutorial on that on my channel it's very easy and then i'm going to set the compression to 80 percent because we don't really need all that data And then we can uh, do a, a test render. So go to render and then render image. And then you get an idea of how long it will take to render the whole animation. And then we can go back. And then before I start the final render, I'm just going to make sure that everything looks fine and then save one more time and then we go to render and then render animation 